People line up if you would. We'll take as many as time permit. Assuming that humanity has a moral compass and it's been established by the Supreme Court that corporations are people too, um, or at least by some candidates, uh, how do you propose that we help these corporations that um, do have value as well as danger, help them find that moral compass practically speaking? So that's a really important question. I think there are two ways to look at the problem. I want there to be more competition. I want them to have to respond to what the consumer demands. Apple right now has chosen to aggressively embrace privacy as a core value. And they are creating an alternative marketplace with a very different set of things. And so in the competitive landscape, I want to see more companies do that. I want to see banks that sit there and say to credit card processors, you can't trade that data anymore, right? There, there are ways to control this with companies that do have good value systems. And then the other side of this coin is, I think we have to change the incentives. California has a rule that is hopefully gonna become a law that will allow any citizen of California to sue a company for damages. Right now you lose that in the terms of service, but there are real mm. damages and you have to change the incentive structures. And then the third thing is you do it through regulation. Again, I would like to ban the third party marketplace for our most private information. And once we've banned it, then we can have a conversation of what is legitimate, what's not. And I'm not saying you can't use an Uber. I'm just saying that the data can't go from Uber to Google and then from Google to anybody. Okay? And, and so presumably every one of those companies will be opposed to that ban. Ups, absolutely. Because I that, hope so. That, that's, their, that's the mother's milk of that whole operation. That, that is right? correct. Yeah. Fortunately, you know, what are there 340 million people in America? So there's 339 million of us and 1 million of them. So we have the numbers and we have a general election coming up in 2020. And I want to get in the grill of every single candidate from, you know, aldermen, town council, all the way all up to the way president up. of the United States and go, okay, ladies and gentlemen, what are we going to do about this? Will you protect our privacy? Not just will you protect our privacy, will you ban the trading in my most yeah. personal, most intimate data? Right. Yes, I like sir. the way you yeah. said it. Thank sir. you. Uh, just to kind of shift gears, uh, I'm just thinking about these big Chinese companies that I yeah. guess aren't outside of China yet, maybe I'm wrong, but they're even more pervasive in that culture than what's going on here and it's feeding their AI and it's giving them a technological advantage. I'm just wondering what your thoughts of This is that such are. an important question. So in China, you know that it's a totalitarian government style, and they want to use social networking technology, what they call social credit, which will become fully deployed next year. They want to use the beha it for behavioral uh, manipulation. They want to have, they want to modify the behavior of their citizens and get them to do things that the, that the regime wants them to do. Facebook and Google both want to be free to do the same thing because that's fundamentally the business they're in. Right. And they're saying, hey, you can't regulate us because we need to compete with China. And I'm going, hold on. This is America. Since when is behavioral modification an American goal? I'm looking at this going, I don't want to compete with them. I want to get it so that those guys who are tracking your mouse movement give you a product that says, hey, look, you're, you're showing symptoms of Parkinson's, go get it fixed, right? I want to use AI for good, not for bad. And so I, I actually push back on their root assumption, which is let China have behavioral modification. We shouldn't want to be in that business. And let's stop Facebook and Google and Microsoft and Amazon from buying up every AI researcher in America because what they're doing is preventing people from doing all the good apps by raising the cost of all the engineers. So the list of bad actors, you said Facebook, Google, Microsoft, Microsoft Amazon. Amazon. And then there are all the wannabe ones, which would include IBM and, uh, you know, which IBM at least wants to have a good value system around AI, but they're still in the behavioral modification world. And then you've got people like Verizon and Comcast who, who would like to have a piece of that. Is there and anybody then, not on that list? Well, it, it, let me put it this way. Everyone else should not, I mean, Apple's obviously not on that list. Salesforce.com, I think, is mostly not on that list. And I think in the rest of the economy, nobody else should want to be on that list because these guys are eventually going to take your business away. Right. Okay. Thanks. Commission. Hi. Um, when I joined Facebook, it was 2009, so 10 years ago. And I got on, like many of my friends, to keep track of what my niece was doing being on Facebook in high school. 10 years later, she's long gone off Facebook and all of my younger relatives, when I say, oh, you're gonna post to Facebook, they go, they look at me like, oh, you old person. Facebook is over. 
for that. Facebook is over. It's all about Instagram. So I guess my question really is, do you think that Facebook has an age demographic problem? Maybe not today. Or maybe that's the solution, because the fact is, we're going to die. <laughs> I'm sorry to tell you. And then if the younger Speak people are Speak for yourself, not, well, Evan. You may live forever. But, <laughs> you may live forever. But, but the point is, maybe that's one way we solve the problem, is so, all the users die. So Facebook owns Instagram. And if I had to pick a threat going forward, I'd tell you Instagram's a greater threat than Facebook. And here's why. Interesting. So if you look at it, Instagram starts when people are basically pre-teens going on before the age limit pretending to be older And that's than they a are. social network for them. Of sorts, and it, right? it, it's, it's totally the social network for them. And there you have massive bullying problems. So mm -hmm. body shaming of pre-teen girls, bullying up the age spectrum, and then fear of missing out with the older teens. There's been massive election manipulation. The Russian thing actually was wildly more viral on Instagram. So even though they only had 20 million people, the impact on it was proportionally much greater than on Facebook. And so when you're looking at this thing, if we think about the most problematic products, I would say YouTube is the single most problematic product, then Instagram, then Facebook. Facebook is around electoral issues is the most well, Where's dangerous. your Instagram book? Insta scam. I'll give you a title. You wanna, you know. I'll work on that. You next. work on your next book. Thank, you. Thank, Thank you. Okay. you. I'm being told that based on Roger's schedule to get down to book people, we have time for one more. That's I'm right. very sorry, sir. Messenger and WhatsApp. Yeah. Specifically, a lot of conversation is that Facebook really wants to be out of the the newsfeed game and push everything into Messenger. Uh, that feels like an enormous threat. So the reason Mark Zuckerberg came out a couple weeks ago and said they're going to turn everything into end-to-end -end encryption so it looks like Messenger and WhatsApp. And he puts this forward like he's looking out for our privacy. What's really going on is that his big problem is that he is home to hate speech, he is home to disinformation, he is home to conspiracy theories. And if you encrypt end-to-end, -end, he's no longer responsible because he can no longer tell what you're doing. Right. So he's not trying to get rid of the hate speech, the the conspiracy theories. He's trying or, to get rid of the visibility. He's trying it. to get rid of his responsibility for it. Yeah. So it's, this is another example. I, I think using messaging models is generally good. And they did do one thing this, about three months ago that was really important, which is they, they shrank how much you could forward things in WhatsApp because the Brazilian election was almost certainly decided by election manipulation and interference that took place on WhatsApp. By way of WhatsApp. And now by, we hear that Jared Kushner's back-channel communications with foreign governments is happening also through WhatsApp. So there are lots of issues around all right. of these things, and i got to be honest with you, I don't know the answers to all of them, okay? What I know is that Mark was not being as authentic in positioning his manifesto as he might have been. The one piece I loved in it, if he follows through, is he promised he would no longer host servers in any country which had human rights or privacy violations is a systemic thing, which means he would not go into China. It means he would pull out of Vietnam, the Philippines, Cambodia, and other countries Has with that bad yet rights. Has that yet to happen? So well, no, of course it hasn't happened yet. So my point is, if it happens, it will be a, a huge positive. deal. Quickly, have you heard from either uh, Zuck or Sheryl Sandberg since the book came out? No. In fact, I haven't heard from either one of them since the 30th of October of 2016. <laughs> and I've heard from no one at Facebook above the level of just engineer uh, since February 2017. And I don't understand that because, again, I went to them sincerely trying to offer help. You should send them a book. I, yeah, <laughs> I probably should. Yeah. That right. would be funny. Give Roger McNamee a big hand. Thank you. Thank you all for coming. We'll see you again. Okay.